Welcome to Bolton Clark's Be Healthy and Active program. This session is managing sleep and fatigue. Hi, I'm Deanna, a district nurse with Bolton Clark, and I'm going to talk about what fatigue is and how to manage it. I'll also be covering why sleep is important, the different stages of sleep, and how much sleep you should be getting, and I'll be giving you some techniques to improve your sleep. Fatigue is more than just feeling drowsy. It's feeling tired all the time and having no energy to do anything. It can be mental or a physical feeling or both. You might notice some signs of fatigue like yawning, blurred vision, heavy eyes, slowed reflexes or responses, and moodiness and irritability. When you are fatigued, you may find you are forgetful or find it hard to concentrate. You may have headaches or dizziness, aching or sore muscles, and you may find you have no motivation for things that you once enjoyed. Do any of these signs and symptoms sound familiar to you? Fatigue is a symptom, something you can feel and describe, not a condition or disease. It can be caused by a medical condition, such as a thyroid disorder, heart disease, or diabetes. Or it can be caused by lifestyle factors, like alcohol, prescription medications, or drugs, not getting enough exercise, not eating well, or lack of sleep. Fatigue can be workplace related, from shift work, workplace stress or burnout. It is also a common symptom of mental health problems such as depression, anxiety and grief. To reduce fatigue, you first need to understand why you are feeling fatigued. If you are having trouble managing fatigue or if fatigue is affecting your quality of life, seek professional help. Have a chat to your GP or let your nurse know. You can also check out some of our helpful resources on the Bolton Clark website. One possible cause of fatigue is sleeping issues. So now let's have a talk about sleep. Sleep is as vital for life as food or water. Current research suggests sleep is important because it helps us sort and store new memories. Our brain collects loads of information throughout the day and while we're sleeping, it cleans and sorts all this information to make sure we're storing just the important things. We don't need to remember everything we experience during the day. That's why sleep is necessary for our brains to keep working normally, control our stress levels, and plays a very important role in brain development. The long-term effects of not getting enough sleep or sleep deprivation are serious and can lead to an increased risk of heart disease and stroke, issues dealing with stress, high blood sugar and diabetes, obesity and weight problems, issues with the hormones that control your hunger levels, and problems with your immune system that may mean you are less able to protect yourself from illness. Our sleep follows a regular pattern. During the night, we cycle through five stages of sleep. Each cycle lasts around 100 minutes, and we usually have between four and six cycles each night. In each of these stages, we have different amounts of brain activity, eye movements, and muscle tone. The first stage in each cycle is light sleep. In this stage, our eye movements and muscle activity slow down and we can be easily woken up. In stage two, our eyes stop moving and our brain activity slows down. In stages three and four, we are in a deep sleep and have very slow brain activity. It is very hard to wake someone in deep sleep and they'll often wake up very groggy. This is the important time in which scientists think the brain is cleaning up all the information you collected during the day. The fifth stage of sleep is rapid eye movement or REM sleep. This is when your eyes move more quickly in different directions behind closed eyelids, and it's the stage when you have the most dreams. During this stage, there may be times when you are unable to move or speak, which prevents you from physically acting out your dreams. People awoken in this stage may remember their dreams. In the first part of the night, you spend more time in deep sleep, stages three and four. As the night progresses, you spend more time in REM, dream stage, and less time in deep sleep. 
By morning, nearly all sleep time is spent in the light sleep stages, one, two, and REM. So how many hours of sleep do we need to cycle through these five stages? One in five Australians get less than six hours sleep per night, which isn't enough. However, the amount of sleep needed is different for everybody and depends on a number of things. Age is one example. Infants need to sleep for around 16 hours each day. Teenagers need around nine hours sleep and adults need an average of seven to eight hours sleep per night. Some people are super sleepers and can live on five hours sleep each night, while others still need around 10 hours of sleep in adulthood. Regardless of the number of hours you need, make sure you get enough sleep. A good indication is if you wake feeling refreshed, waking just before the alarm or not needing an alarm is also a sign that you've had enough sleep. Did you know that it can take up to six weeks to recover from one night of lost sleep? Sleep debt is difficult to repay. If you don't get enough sleep, you may find it difficult to concentrate, feel irritable or grumpy, be hyperactive, get sick often, have headaches, jaw pain and earaches, feel depressed or anxious, feel sleepy during the day and feel fatigued. If you notice any of these symptoms or think you may not be getting enough sleep, it's probably time to look at your sleep patterns and habits a little more closely. Things that can affect your sleep include alcohol, stress and lack of exercise. As we age, our sleep patterns change and we spend less time in deep sleep. We may wake more often during the night to go to the toilet or because of medical issues like arthritis, pain and indigestion. Medications used to treat these conditions may also interfere with sleep. There are many sleep disorders that could be impacting your sleep. The most common are insomnia, which is difficulty getting to sleep or staying asleep, obstructive sleep apnea, where your breathing can stop while you are sleeping, snoring, which can impact the sleep of others, and restless leg syndrome, where you have a strong urge to move your legs. You can find more information about these disorders on the Bolton Clark website. There are some simple good habits and practices that you can use to get a better night's sleep, such as keeping a regular sleep schedule, aim to go to bed and wake up the same time every day, including weekends. This is possibly the most important sleep habit and will help you regulate your body clock so that your body is prepared to sleep when you are. If you're napping, keep it short and not too close to bedtime. A 15 to 30 minute nap early in the afternoon is probably best. Regular exercise can also promote good sleep. Try to get 20 to 30 minutes a day, three days a week, and again, not too close to bedtime. Make sure you're getting a dose of sunlight during the day. Ensure that screens are shut down two to three hours before bed. Use the bedroom for sleeping only. Avoid reading or watching TV in bed. If you are unable to fall asleep, move to another room and do something relaxing, then return to bed when you're sleepy. Limit your use of sleeping pills and speak to your doctor if pain or medications are affecting your sleep. Try to avoid caffeine, alcohol and big meals too late in the day. Warm milk might help sleep, but try to minimise drinking an hour and a half before bed to avoid needing to get up while you're falling asleep. Make sure the room you're sleeping in is cool, ideally around 19 degrees, as well as dark and quiet. If there are things worrying you, write them down to avoid thinking about them all night. If you are feeling stressed or anxious, try mindfulness and breathing techniques. If you are worried about something disrupting your sleep, have a chat to your doctor. You can also check out some of the other videos in the Be Healthy and Active series for tips on nutrition, stress and mindfulness. Now that you understand how fatigue and poor sleep can affect your well-being, take time to care for yourself by taking care of your sleep. For more information about the Be Healthy and Active program or to book a session, visit boltonclark.com.au forward slash be healthy.